Hello, I'm Laura Lamabler, Cultural Engagement Advisor at King's College London. And I'm here today with Ed Nesbitt and Tom Hodgson from the Music Department to talk about a piece that they've put together in response to the COVID-19 pandemic and the lockdown situation that we all find ourselves in at the moment. So, hello Tom and Ed. To start off, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourselves? Sure. Um, so my name is Tom Hodgson and I am an ethnomusicologist in the music department here at King's. My research uh, in times outside of pandemic uh, focus on music in Kashmir in Pakistan. And I also have a project on the go at the moment that is looking at new digital technologies and how they are shaping certain forms of creativity and value in different parts of the world. And I'm Ed Nesbitt. I am a composer and I've been on the staff at King's since 2016. Uh, one of my main interests is in vocal music, uh, which is what gave rise to this project. Thanks, guys. So, Ed, uh, do you want to tell us a bit more about what inspired you to create a musical response to the current COVID situation? I'm writing a song cycle that I've been uh, working on for a couple of months now. Um, for soprano voice and piano uh, that is actually wasn't originally a response to the crisis at all. It sets uh, 26 Latin riddles by the, uh, the Saint St. Aldhelm, um, who was around in the 7th century AD. Uh, and initially it was just simply a piece that I was writing because I, I had some time for it. I couldn't leave the house. Uh, and it was really when Tom approached me to, to work on these together that the project became more centred around the idea of responding to the pandemic and the lockdown. Yeah, and I suppose from my point of view, um, towards the beginning of the lockdown, actually, Ed and I were having this conversation and Ed mentioned this song cycle, uh, and in particular this, this song about a nightingale. And it was just at that time uh, when I'm sure many people recognised this bird song outside of our windows. And I mean, I live in central London, in Bloomsbury, uh, which is normally quite a noisy place. And it was incredibly pronounced, the, this bird song outside my window. Um, and around that time, I also took delivery of some uh, musical toys that I could do some home recording with. And uh, the idea had sort of started to kind of become quite obvious that we could see nice to do around uh, around Ed's composition and uh, putting it into some kind of dialogue with the noises outside. Cool, so Ed there's obviously kind of uh, quite a backstory to this uh, this work. What was your kind of starting point for creating this particular piece and can you tell us a bit about the story behind it? So I mean, I'm always interested in the distant past. That, that's one of the things that just in a completely non-reflective way really fascinates me. Um, and I've set texts from Anglo-Saxon England before. Um, and I thought, well, Anglo-Saxon is very difficult to pronounce. No one really knows how to pronounce it. And so singing it is difficult. So uh, I found these um, Latin riddles um, that were written at the same time in the same place just in a language that's a little bit more familiar. Um, and I was just really, uh, I guess, intrigued by the range of subject matter that they had. They're all um, short, pithy poems about, a lot of them about nature, which is something that, again, I find myself setting to music quite a lot, uh, and which again relates to what Tom was talking about, of um, you know, the nature in some way reasserting itself as, um, humans stay at home. Fantastic. Um, and Tom, can you tell us a bit about how you actually went about recording the piece and putting it together while, of course, we're all working virtually from our homes? Well, one of the things that I was quite interested in, I suppose as a, as a challenge almost, was to think about how we can respond creatively within the constraints, actually, of living uh, and working at home. So not having access to the usual recording equipment, not having access, I suppose, to, you know, the physical proximity of performing. 
So I felt very conscious about working within those limitations, which in, in a way also comes through in the recording. To do it, I made use of this little board that I bought at the very beginning of the, uh, the, the pandemic. And it plugs into my laptop, it makes it very easy to, to, to input musical parts into uh, Apple Logic, which is the software that I use. So I used that, I used a microphone to record samples of noises and the news and uh, created, I suppose, the arrangement in my uh, apartment. And then it was a question of, well, how do we get the singer uh, to record it when we can't actually go and see anybody? And uh, I called upon a friend of mine from university called Michael Wood, who's a countertenor at Edinburgh Cathedral. And Michael uh, found a very quiet corner of Edinburgh and sang his parts into his iPhone. So one Friday, he sent all of these audio files down to me and I spent an afternoon listening to his voice, which was really nice and sort of piecing it together into uh, the final version, which you can hear today. So it was, it was very much a kind of collaborative effort across quite, quite a large distance. Yeah, that's amazing that you can create something that's such high quality using, you know, an iPhone and a, an incredible little keyboard kit. Um, apologies for the background noise here. That's my door. My doorbell just went. But we're used to this now in, uh, in lockdown time. So we'll just skim over that. Um, yeah, and, and actually the, that you've managed to create, you know, such, a, such an incredible evocative piece just using technology really is amazing and you know as I said to you originally when I first heard the piece it did make me cry um, oh. really it is really, really really beautiful um, and you should be very very proud of, uh, of what you've produced um, Thank maybe you. you could tell us a little bit more about how the piece sort of like fits into uh, your work more broadly um, and whether you'll be able to use it as part of teaching going forward or part of your research? Yes, so I mean for me one of the one of the courses that I teach at King's actually is on the music industry and as part of this course we think about how new technologies are shaping creativity and shaping, shaping certain kinds of value and so for me, it was, it was almost the case of putting my money where my mouth is and, you know, thinking about, well, actually, you know, what is this technology doing? Is it, is it, is it liberating us? Is it democratizing? Or does it also constrain certain choices that we have to make? So it's the process of recording this song has actually been very closely aligned to some of the things that I'm teaching. And I think increasingly, actually, if we're looking at higher education as being something that happens both remotely and in person. Mm -hmm. I think using, you know, this kind of, these kind of tools um, in our teaching is something that we're gonna be doing, you know, increasingly often. So I'm just very interested in using this, mainly as a, a great creative exercise, but secondly, as something that I think might, might actually inform some of my teaching in, in the future. Fantastic. Ed, do you have uh, anything to add on that side? Yes, I mean, for me, this project is both incredibly uh, characteristic of what I do and also a complete novelty for me. Um, I'm writing you know, songs for voice and piano all of the time. It's you know, probably my favourite thing to do. Um, but to produce songs in this way uh, and to you know, work closely with um, with someone to who will take them in quite a new direction from what I had um, envisaged. That's a really new thing for me. And um, yeah, I mean, I I I don't know what the long, long term implications of that are, but I'm interested to see you know, what happens with this and and what doors it opens up for me. Brilliant. And uh, I understand actually that this piece is just the first in a series that you're developing. Uh, can you tell us a bit more about what we should expect from, from the others? So, I mean, this is a really um, a work in progress, our plan of what we're going to do with this. But yes, yeah, certainly we, we did the first song about the Nightingale as, a, as more or less a one-off and and we plan to do more songs, maybe 10 or so, um, with different singers. So we currently are working on the second song um, with the same singer, Michael Woods, 
Um, I've been in contact with some other singers um, of, of different backgrounds um, to work on future songs. And there's a, a international theme and a, a kind of multilingual theme that's emerging. So um, we have a Chinese singer lined up and a Lithuanian singer, and they're going to be singing songs in their own languages um, as we um, yeah, continue to produce songs that respond to the changing situation. So the song we're working on at the moment is, um, uh, in a way, reflecting on the potential easing of the lockdown that's going on at the moment. And I think the idea is that um, the changing situation in the country will, in some way, shape the way that this project develops. Hmm. Well, it's really yeah. interesting to see how, yeah, how it, it changes as, uh, yeah, as our situation evolves. The thing that I'm finding really interesting about it at the moment is taking some of these compositions of theirs and they're, they're all in some way quite ele element, elemental, you know, they're to do with nature. There's, there's this thing that runs, this theme that runs through the whole uh, series of compositions. And for each one of those, I'm being sent them at a different moment in this very fast moving crisis. And in a way, the way I, I've been responding to it has been very much trying to be in dialogue with some of those changes. But I think having these singers come on board as well just adds that kind of quite interesting, creative uh, dynamic to it. But I think, you know, certainly one thing that I feel quite strongly about is that it has this, almost has like a, a soothing effect as well. You know, I, I found that making it was very relaxing. It took my mind off the news. It took my mind off the uncertainty around what's going on. And I hope that as we move through the series, that's going to continue in some way. Excellent. If the first one is anything to go by, I'm sure they will all be very soothing and relaxing. Mm -hmm. As I say, it's a fantastic piece. Um, good luck with, uh, with the rest of it. Uh, carry on with the good work. Um, and you can listen to all of the, the tunes as they develop um, on Tom and Ed's SoundCloud channel, which is uh, soundcloud.com forward slash Nesbit Hodgson. Um, so yeah, keep uh, keep eyes peeled uh, there for future wonderful pieces of music to inspire us all through this very difficult time. Thanks so much, Tom and Ed, for your time and for talking us through these wonderful pieces. Uh, best of luck with the with the work and the ongoing lockdown situation. Take care of yourselves. Thanks, Laura. Thanks, Laura.